All right, back with me is my Saturday night panel. Tim, give it to us straight. Do you expect Jenny Thomas to actually speak to the January 6th committee? Uh, you know, Trump kept saying he talked to Robert Mueller. He never did. Jenny Thomas, what do you think she, uh, what's the over under on whether she shows up? Gosh, I, I have to believe at the end of the day, she is not going to show up, even though she said she will, because the range of issues that this committee could ask her about go well beyond her communications with John Eastman, although those, those are crucially important. We know she was also in touch with Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows. Uh, and the larger and more, I think, pressing issue in all of this is that she's married to a Supreme Court justice who has been um, ruling on, on very pertinent matters to the committee's work, including whether or not a work product from the White House, Donald Trump's work product from the White House, uh, could be turned over the to the committee to review. Uh, that There was a big tug of war between Trump's lawyers and the January 6th committee on that material. Uh, it went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said it had to be turned over to the committee with one lone dissent on that, and it was Clarence Thomas. So you have uh, uh, Clarence Thomas ruling on, on central issues in the committee's work while his wife, is is behind the scenes at a minimum egging people on uh, uh, to to to, you know, continue to disrupt and undermine the results of the 2020 election. So it gets to this larger issue of conflicts of interest on the Supreme Court. And and John Roberts needs to do something about this. This has been per percolating along in a light way about financial conflicts of interest on the court and whether or not the justices needed to disclose more about their own finances and what they owned pertaining to cases that came before the court. And uh, Roberts continually argued that um, the court guides its own ethics policies, it self-regulates, it monitors its own business. And now you have this big, ugly car crash of, of Ginny Thomas yeah. and Clarence Thomas uh, sort of jointly blowing through most sensible conflicts of interest issues. So it's got to be addressed. And I don't think she will address that if push comes to shove. Uh, Latasha, your thoughts on this? I want you to weigh in on it because, you know, I, I, what does this mean for our faith in the judiciary and our elections for the wife of a Supreme Court justice to be working to overturn a presidential election? I mean, she is actively out there emailing, working, uh, allegedly conspiring to overturn the election. You know, I thought you were actually quite generous when you said three degrees of separation. It's actually one degree of separation. <laughs> Eastman used to be a law clerk for uh, for Judge Thomas. You know, this is extremely connected. Even in this, in the ruling that he made, that he that he dissented. The bottom line is he could have recused himself, but he didn't. But aside from that, if you look at even what Jenny Thomas has said in one of the emails of the 21 emails that she sent, and one of the emails that she sent to Meadows, she said that they needed to make a plan and release Kraken because it takes time for the army who is gathering for his back. What army? Are, is she speaking about the army that was the insurrectionist that actually took over the Capitol and we saw the loss of lives and literally committed a crime against this nation and the people of this nation? And so I think it's really important. You know, ironically, I actually believe she may show up because I think her arrogance, I think the Republicans have gotten away with so much that they, are, they don't have a checkpoint. That at the end of the day, what they feel is that they can get away, that they have the power, that they're gonna just push through. It doesn't matter whether it's legal or not, that they are above the law. And so I would not be surprised. I expect her to show up. Mike, you know, as someone who's running to be the Lieutenant Governor for Texas and obviously believes in the integrity of our elections and, and its outcome, what does it mean for the, for the public, for Texans, to have faith in the outcome of these elections. I mean, how dangerous is it for Republicans to be undermining that faith? They, they run on it only insofar as that they win. And if they lose, suddenly the elections are not valid. Well, Ben Franklin famously said the words, if you can keep it. And you all know what I'm talking about. This is precisely what he envisioned. I think the conspiracy is in plain sight. You asked earlier, do we want Jenny Thomas to testify or not? Sure, let her testify. But I've seen all I need to see and so has Americans. This conspiracy is operating in plain sight. It's large, it's built on a lie, and the liars know it. And I think everybody needs to know this about my beloved state of Texas and the Republican Party in Texas added a plank to their platform this very day. 
to say that Joe Biden is not the president. Now, what that means is if you're a politician in Texas, you must lie. You must now lie if you want the party support. It's absolutely absurd. And we know what we must do. Now, I was born in 1961, and I've seen an awful lot of American history. I've seen good times and I've seen bad times. I've worried and I've rejoiced. But I never doubted that our political leaders would betray their oath to this Constitution in this country, and they have. My opponent, Dan Patrick, has lied through his teeth for the benefit of winning his next election, and I believe disabling democracy. And now, testimony or not, <clears throat> lawsuits or not, criminal culpability or not, we know what we must do. And if you don't believe that lie, and if you cherish democracy and you see what I see, this is, this is the moment of maximum peril, then you got to get in this fight with me and everybody else who's fighting against these liars to save our democracy. Mike, we got about 30 seconds left, but what, do Texans share that concern that you have right now? Or are you trying to convince them? I mean, when, when they ask you about Republican efforts to overthrow our democracy, do you feel they, they realize the gravity of the moment? Some do, all must. I would say the Democrats know that it's a lie and they're frustrated and they're angry. Independents, a large swath of the Republicans but what I see too much of is shrugging their shoulders. Well, politicians will be politicians. Folks must understand that this lie is meant to poison our body politic so that we can just, so that this democracy will be disabled. And once gone, it can't be recovered. And why leave anything to chance here? People need to get off the sofa and into this fight. Now, I'll tell you that the momentum is growing because of these hearings, and we're going to make sure that people get in this fight. And I do hope that people join me and all the other candidates. Mike, our uh, best of luck to you, and uh, we'll hope to see you back on the program as a lieutenant governor at some point. Uh, Mike, Latasha Brown, Tim O'Brien, thank you so much for your time. Greatly appreciate all three of you joining us this evening. Thank you. And thank you thank for you. making time.